thank you uh, our viewers and we want to welcome you to our program the Shepherd program that uh, we talk about leadership this program is all about leadership we are learning about what leadership is all about how leadership should uh, behave and uh, what is the expectation of leadership and we thank God that we have learned a lot and we will continue to learn so I want to welcome you this is Leverett uh, George Kamano the senior pastor of Word of Faith Church Loilo and also the principal of Word of Faith Community College. And we thank God we are still training students, we are still training leaders. And uh, as I always uh, uh, encourage you, use the number on your screen so that you can get more information about our college. And I thank God because of the response of the people you are supporting us, our stakeholders. We continue to pray that God will continue to do you good. The college is growing. The number of students are multiplying. And we bless God for it. Now, we are leading now to start the second uh, a new uh, season now. And in this new season, we are going to do two things by the grace of God. Number one, we are going to look at leader and the choosing of other leaders. We are going to look at how leader is able to successfully choose other leaders. And number two, we are going to look at the ways of increasing our influence with people. Because remember we said leadership is influence, so the more influence that a leader has, the better is the leadership. Therefore, we are going to look at ways of increasing our influence with people, and by the grace of God, we are going to look at ten ways. How do I, as a leader, increase my influence with people so that I can be able to continue in uh, leading people and by leading people means I can continue to influence them positively so that we can be able to do it together and they can support me in the vision that the Lord has given me so that the vision can be realized. Remember this, if your vision is not bought by anybody, then you have nothing. I'll say that again. If your vision is not bought by anybody, then you have nothing. Because vision requires a lot of support. And people can never be able to support the vision they have not bought. And, then, and people cannot buy a vision that is not sold. Because the leader must know how to sell the vision, how to influence people until they buy the vision. And once they buy the vision, they support it. And once they support it, then that vision, as we have said, it will be realized. So today, by the grace of God, we want to start talking about the leader and the choosing of other leaders. How do I, as a leader, effectively choose other leaders so that we can be able to flow together as a team? And we want to lay the foundation, uh, or rather or give the introduction today. And uh, we, say, we are going to say several things that uh, we are going to do it slowly so that you can get it. For a leader... Nothing can match the joy of finding the right person for the right job. Ile jabula ambao linaletea kiongozi fulaha sana ni wakati umepata mtu ambaye anahitaji afanye kitu fulani na mtu ambaye anafaa kuifanya hiyo jambo na huyu mtu aweze kuifanya na njia ambao inastahili. Na nataka nirudie hivyo for a leader the greatest blessing Ile fulaha, ile baraka kubwa na fulaha kubwa, the greatest blessing, the greatest joy for a leader, it is finding the right person for the right job. Unapata the right person that will be able to do that job na naifanya vizuri. When the match is perfect, when you get the right person for the right job, the job get done well, ile kazi inafanywa na inafanywa vizuri, and everyone benefits. And I want to say that again, when a leader is able to get the right person for the right job, that job will be done well. Na wakati yokasi inafanyika vizuli, then everybody benefit. The leader benefits, the person doing it benefits, and the entire organization benefits. Follow this. But unfortunately, every leader also knows, fiongosi wengi sana sana wale wameka kwa uduma kwa muda, they know the agony of cho uh, choosing the wrong person. Wakati moja labda walikuwa na, na kasi na ujukumu fulani, na walikuwa wanataka kupeana hiyo jukumu kwa mtu, labda kwa sababu ya halaka, ama kwa sababu ya agency ambayo ilikuwa pale, 
ama kwa sababu labda yule kiongozi hakujua angalia nini lakini anapatia ile kazi the wrong person na wakati ile kazi ambayo tunapatia the wrong person then inakuwa changamoto sana because remember the job will not be done well and therefore nobody will benefit this is it is frustrating for the leader and the follower as well when you give the person the long assignment ama huu mtu labda the assignment is in, 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 in inafa, lakini ule mtu hakuwa anataka kuifanya hata ule mtu hako na willingness ya kuifanya na ndio unataka kuangalia mambo yote by the grace of god enabled by the holy spirit tuangalie sisi kama viongozi i know we not always get it 100% na kila kiongozi yako na experience hii but we need to try to do what is right and for this your success as a leader will be determined to a large degree by your success in calling and equipping the right people to work with you na ninataka niseme hiyo ingine maana tena your success as a leader ili upate ushindi wewe kama kiongozi it will be largely determined itategemea sana with your success na kule uwezo wako of calling and equipping the right people to work with you when you call the right people and then you equip those like people to work with you people that have your heart people that have bought into the vision and people who have the skills people that have the potential to do it what happens then eventually it will become very successful and remember this success is teamwork you can never succeed alone so you want the contribution of other people so i want to have the right people allowed me once i have those right people allowed me then what happened then we work together then it will become very very successful very important for you to know that and i want to say this again as well listen to this we normally say this anointing alone is not enough upako peke yake haujatosha skills alone are not enough na kuwa na skills alone is also not enough then knowledge alone is not enough hata knowledge peke yake ukiwa na knowledge peke yake as a leader is not enough prayers are good but prayers alone are not enough as well those allowed the leader determine his or her failure or success in the ministry or in any other organization and i want to say that again those allowed the leader wale watu ambao wamesunguka kiongozi wale watu ambao tunafanya kasi na wao those are the people who determine the success of this leader of the failure of this leader watu ndio wanasaidia kiongozi aweze ku succeed and i want you to remember this you can never reach your ultimate destiny unless some people comes into your life i will say that again as a leader even in that as uh, least 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 the destiny of your leadership fulfilling that vision of god for your life i'm saying be able to succeed in that calling unaweza ku succeed katika ile kanisa as a leader is good to realize you never succeed alone there are some people that need to come into your life na some of these people wewe kama kiongozi ndio unahitaji wachague kwa sababu Mungu amekuletea watu we equip them yes and also we give them the right responsibility remember this that the success of an organization largely will depend with the right placement of people you put the right place are the right people in the right place how are watu tunamweka in the right place who you are now so who tunamweka in the right place this is how uh, they have grown spiritually who mtu amekoma kiasi fulani amekoma hii kiasi kwa hivyo hii jukumu lina anaweza kulifanya as we match the people the ability of the people together with the responsibilities that they are supposed to carry then we are going to get great success also remember this is that it is better to have a great vision Leaders, it is better rather let me put this way it is better to have a great uh, what you call a great team with a weak vision it's better to have a great team with a weak vision than to have a great vision with a weak team and let me put that again it is better to you have proper, it is better you have a weak vision let me paraphrase this way to become easier it is better to have a weak vision with a great team than to have a great vision with a weak team why because the vision will always go to the direction of the team kwa hivyo mtu hata akiwa na maono makubwa na nashukuru kwa sababu 
wala viongozi ambao mnatusikiliza nyinyi watu Mungu amesaidia mna maono makubwa kwa sababu ukiona mtu ambaye ameanza kanisa ni mtu ambaye ana maono Mungu amemsaidia ukiona mtu ambaye ana tusa eh, sidio idala fulani huu ni mtu ambaye ana maono Mungu amemsaidia na mmepatia uwezo lakini tunasemaga hivi tafadhali tuwe na maono ambao si kubwa sana hii tunaita week vision na tuwe na timu kubwa kwa sababu ile timu ikiwa kubwa itaweza ku stretch the vision Inaonyo, itaweza kuvuta ile maono unajua one time the sons of the prophet ilifika mahali and then they told El- El- so elisha the prophet wakamwambia mahali ambao tunakaa ni wamekuwa wamekuwa padogo kwa hivyo tupatie turuhusu tuende tutavute miti tuweze kuja tuipanue why because it was a great team hata kama labda maono ile ya mtumishi wa Mungu ilikuwa ma, sehemu walikuwa nakaa hiyo maono yake ilikuwa imfika pale lakini kwa sababu kulikuwa na great team watu ambao the, wanaona saidi as uh, ndio watu ambao wana uwezo saidi na wako tayari kutumia uwezo wao what happened waliweza kupanua mahali pale in other words waliweza kupanua yale maono na ikawa makubwa lakini kama una maono makubwa and you have very weak team that team will always frustrate the vision kwa sababu hawa wala watu ni kama kasi yao it is to now ni, ni kusuia ile maono isiendelee si ndio ni kama wanaifuta wana dani a great team inafuta maono out lakini as, a, a weak team inafuta maono dani na ninajua ya mambo ambayo tunaongea siku ya leo this is the frustration of many pastors many pastors have this frustration because they have a great vision from god kuna mambo wanataka kufanya mambo makubwa but unfortunately the kind of people that are allowed them allowed in them they are they are a real challenge ni watu ambao wengine wana, wana uweso lakini they are not ready to give their potential for the organization follow this having the right people in the right places is essential for success in our leadership follow this the team's dynamic will always change according to the placement of people Unajua team dynamic inabadilisha vile timu inafanya kazi inabadilika kulingana na how we place the people. Wakati tunapata the right people then we place them in the right place it help the team to continue. Inafanya timu iweze kuendelea haraka uh, bele na iweze kupanuka katika yale ambayo ina, inafanya. No John Maxwell uh, amepeana this uh, account inasema hivi. If you have the wrong person in the wrong place it brings regression regression in kurudi nyuma you have the wrong person and in the wrong place then it bring regression ni kusema hatuendelei ni kama tumekuwa stagnant ana ni kama hivi ni kama tunarudi nyuma number two, if you have the wrong person in the right place in a letter frustration we say the wrong person in the right place in a letter frustration if you have the right person in the wrong place it brings confusion Now this is the right person but we are placing them in the wrong place it brings confusion. Number four, if you have the right person in the right place it brings progress. We are saying the right person we put that person in the right place and remember this it is the responsibility of the leader to place people accordingly. Unajua hiyo ni jukumu la kiongozi. Hiyo ndio kazi ya kiongozi unaona huu mtu ana uwezo huu This is their potential. Unaona they have grown spiritually. They can be entrusted with this responsibility. So it is the work of the leader to place people in the right place. But follow this. When you place the right person in the right place, it leads to progress. And I believe every leader is seeking for progress. But number five, follow this. If you place the right people now, not just one person but everybody in the team. If you place the right people in the right places it brings multiplication we want to say that again you place the right people not just one, one individual but you place everyone in the in the in the team you place them in the right place tunasemaga you place them in their niche the word niche means where everybody adds the most value so as a leader if you can be able to place everybody in the team within their niche then it brings multiplication for the team Unaangalia huu mtu ambao tumemweka kwa pristim ni kwa sababu ako na uwezo na ako na na, na, ako na ile nia then the other person kama is anasha we are putting the right person there that person will usher people with joy 
I'm saying they will do it with the celebration because they are in the right place. But the moment you, look, you put the right person, you put them in the wrong place, you are be sure there will be a lot of frustration. I'm saying a lot of frustration. Then if you put the wrong person, but you put them in the right place, we are going to go out with a lot of frustration. And our aim and our prayer is that every, every leader must learn what we are going to learn. We, we, we are embarking on learning, and we are going to look at seven things that every leader should look for when you are placing people in the right place. Because the moment you put everyone in the right place, what happens? Everybody else will benefit. The people will be happy. They will be fulfilled. They will do ministry with joy. And remember, ministry is supposed to be rewarding and it's supposed to be exciting. Everybody will do ministry with joy. They'll be excited in what they are doing. They will, be, they will feel rewarded by the fulfillment that they are getting in what they are doing. And what happened eventually, the entire team benefits. And we want to say that the entire team benefits. And now we are led now to embark and look at these seven things that we are supposed to look for so that once you look at them, and, but I give you guarantee, you will not get 100%, but it's better that you get a good percentage even as we give people a chance to continue growing as we do ministry with them together. And we are going to look at these seven things. And today, let's start by looking at determine the spiritual maturity of the person. This is where we are. As a leader, you must be able to look at the spiritual maturity of the person you are considering for a given responsibility. I'll say that again. That's why Paul told Timothy, don't be in haste to lay hands on people. That's why we must always give people a chance and we give them space to be able to glow. We must give people a chance to glow. That's why we don't learn to somebody because about mutu alikuja kanisa jana na labda tunaona huu mtu amekaa hivi na vile alafu the next day we are giving them responsibility. We, we want those people to get our spirit at the same time we need to assess their spiritual maturity. And for this, before looking at other aspects of leadership ability, you as a leader need to examine a potential leader from a spiritual perspective. We say that we want to look at this potential leader. Huyu mtu ambaye ninataka kumpatia chance to be an elder, as a person that we want to appoint as a deacon. We want to look at their spiritual uh, maturity. We want to look at their, how, how are they spiritually? Because Bible remember, the physical follows the spiritual. We want to look first of all from the spiritual perspective. Is he or she spiritually qualified for the position? And you realize this, in some cases like the elders and the deacons, the Bible has given us direct biblical qualification. Now for the elders and the deacons, we go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. We look at Titus chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. The Bible has given us the qualification of somebody that will be appointed as an elder, as a deacon. And when you encourage you, my viewer, you can look at them. But in other cases where the Bible does not give us direct biblical qualification, then we must, we must do the right judgment. You as a leader, you must do the right judgment of the level of a person's spiritual maturity. And for us to be able to look at spiritual maturity, there are several things that we need to look at. Number one, we need to look at that potential leader's character. We look at their character. Remember this character make trust possible and trust make leadership possible. There is no leadership without trust. So if this potential leader is not a man or a woman of character, then that person can never be trusted by the followers. And when they cannot be trusted by the people you are entrusting them to serve, then what happens? They can never be able to lead those people. You know, when you talk about character, we are saying this. Think about the person's character. Character involves uh, they involve uh, what you call things like honesty. Look at that person's integrity. Look at that person's truthfulness. Look at that person's consistency. I'll say those four things again. Among other things, when you talk about character, it's good to take time and look at that potential leader's honesty. Is he or she an honest person? Number two, look at their integrity. When you talk about integrity, we are saying their actions and their 
they are what they line up. What they promise is what they do. Do they keep their promises? Do they keep time? I'm saying, are, are, are they people you can be able uh, to depend on? Look at their truthfulness. Are they men and women? Or is he a man or a woman who is truthful? Remember the Bible says the, uh, the Bible says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. Follow this. Where there is no truth, there is no grace. And the ministry is by grace. You can never excel in ministry without grace. Those people, they cannot enjoy the grace of God. Where there is no truth, there is no grace. But without grace, you can never be able to excel in ministry. Follow this. And number four, look at their consistency. Is this person a consistent person? Without a solid character, a leader will never develop and will only bring grief to your church. They only bring grief to that organization. No amount of skill or natural ability can replace character in a person's life. So we need to look at their character. It doesn't matter the other things that we see. It doesn't matter the other outside aspect we see. If character is not there, character is foundational. And the character is the foundation of competence. Because when you talk about character, we are talking about the fruit of the spirit. When you talk about competence, we are talking about the gift of the spirit. Somebody, they may be good in the gift of the spirit, but if they don't have the fruit, they don't have the foundation, they have no longevity in leadership. They can never go anywhere. Follow this. Character is developed in the funness of life, and unfortunately, there is no shortcut to character. There is no shortcut to character. We must be able to give people time. We examine their work with God. You can teach character qualities to a prospective leader if they are teachable and willing to learn. If they are teachable and willing to learn. But when you see some glaring character deficiencies in somebody's life, wakati wewe kama kiongozi unaona hiyo kiongozi ambao una consider ili mpatie hiyo kasi, lakini kuna mambo ya character ambao unaona imetokezea sana, then you need to give that person time, give them time so that God can continue working with them even as you continue praying and believing in God with them, but it is good you give them time, don't be quick to put them in that leadership position. Because what happened, eventually they will frustrate you. And I want to say this, look carefully at a person's life for clues about his character. Notice if the person takes responsibility for their actions and their mistakes or they blame other people. Those are things we look for. Because we are saying we are taking time before we give somebody that responsibility. Me as a leader, I need to watch that prospective leader. I want to look at the crews in what of, uh, of what you call their, their character. Look at that person. How do they take their responsibility? Are they honest people? Are they people who are able to take responsibility instead of blaming other people? Follow this. In other words, look at unfulfilled promises. Very important. Does the person consistently do what he or she promises or fails to honor his or her words? Follow this. Does he have a spirit of humility and a willingness to be collected? Does he or she tithe faithfully? Does he or she have servant heart? Those things are very important. Then look at that leader's family life. The way that he leads at home will be the way he leads in the church. It is very important to look at somebody's family life. And I will say this, and this is very important for you to understand this. If a leader's wife is not happy, don't expect the church members to be happy with his leadership. And we say that again. And that's why uh, uh, Paul was telling Timothy, when you are considering somebody to be an elder, a deacon, Look at their family. That person must be able to manage their family well. And remember the church is a bigger family. So we want to look at even that person's family. If somebody's wife is never happy, if somebody's husband is never happy, I'm saying if those people, they don't take care of their family, they are not responsible men in their family, those people cannot be able to help us in leadership. So today, we have been looking at, number one, we are determining the spiritual maturity of this leader. And we have looked at one aspect of it, and what we have looked is the issue of character. 
We are looking at the character level of this person. How do they handle themselves? I'm saying, how do they take collection? I'm saying, if this person doesn't, is not going to come to church, do those people tell you as a leader? I can be an alayo pastor, sitaweza, ama kesho sitaweza kuja kanisani. Kwa sababu mtu ambaye anafanya vile, mtu ambaye unaona karakter yake kwa nsuri, na mtu ambaye anahechima. Lakini mtu ambaye hasemi ya kienda, as, unajua they can do anything, they, they, they don't like regard you as a leader, then you put them in a place of responsibility, those people become a challenge to your life. And I want to summarize what we have said today. We are going to continue in the coming episodes, and we are going to look at these seven things. The first thing that we looked today about Hatuja Malisa to Tendelea next time by the grace of God is we, are, we have look at, uh, we have looked at for aspect number one is determining the spiritual maturity of this prospective leader. Na katika that, we have looked at number one is we are looking at the character of this person. And I want to finish by telling you this. And we say this again, character make trust possible and trust make leadership possible. There is no leadership without trust. And it's very important for you to realize this. Kama wewe, kama kiongosi, you cannot trust this pro prospective uh, leader. How do you expect the people that he or she is going to lead to trust them? And if you have a, a doubt in somebody's character, then you can never risk to put them in leadership because when they get into leadership, those people become a great challenge. We pray that God will help us to be able to look at ourselves and even as we look at other, other people. And remember this, as a leader, to get the right people, you must be the right person. As we are looking to get the right people, I want you to know this, we must be the right person. I cannot get the right people if I'm not the right person. And even as I look at other people to work with me, I remember this, and I remember we said this, and we go to say again, one of the ways to influence people is by example. Whether you me as the, the lead leader, I must be a good role model so that even as I choose other people, they can be able to pattern after me. We want to bless God for you once more. Let's continue following these teachings. Let's work on our character. It is not late. Even you who have been listening to us, if there are some character challenges in your life, the grace of God is there. It will help you be able to work on your character, work on your honesty, work on your truthfulness, be a truth leader. I'm saying work on your reliability, be a person that is consistent because there is a great blessing in consistency. We want to welcome you again. And uh, again we say if you are allowed Kiambu Elia, then you are there. You can come and visit our church, Word of Faith Church Kiambu Town. I'm saying the town, the, our church is that within the town. And if you are in Loilo, you can come and visit our church in Word of Faith Church Loilo in a place called Watalam White House. We love you. Continue following this. Word of Faith Community College is still open. Our, uh, so our enrollment is ongoing. And therefore, you can visit our college. And for all other information that you require about this program, about other program in our TV, about the issues of our church and what we are doing, you can call the number that is on your screen. We love you and we thank you for your support. And as we move together with you, as you give us our feedback, we are going to serve you better. And we bless God that you can become a blessing wherever God has placed you. In that church, God has placed you. Be a blessing. In that mountain, God has placed you. Take godly influence in that mountain. And may you stand for God. Because this is why God has called us. And I'll finish by telling you again, the work of leadership is to meet the needs of people. So today, purpose to meet the needs of the people allowed you through the potential and the ability God has given you. We love you. God loves you so much. Continue watching other programs. May you continue to excel and become better by the grace of God. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.